Let's take just a couple of minutes and talk about splicing wires. With irrigation wiring, we're either burying our wires underground, or they exist in a valve pit, a box, or something that's ground level and prone to filling up with water. So if we don't make good connections with our wiring and we don't protect those connections with good grease-filled wire nuts, we're going to end up having corroded connections, which ends up being a high resistance connection, and eventually it's going to corrode through enough to fail, and then you're going to have a problem that's a little tough to find. Sometimes if you have a larger system and you've got a lot of wires that are out in the ground, and especially if you have connections in these wires under the ground, it can be very difficult to find even with a wire tracker. So we basically have two different methods that we're going to talk about. And the first method is using a grease-filled wire nut. And we're going to use these in situations to where we need to make a splice inside of a valve pit and it's not directly buried underground or covered up with dirt all the way around. So we have all kinds of situations of where we have a single valve and a seven inch valve pit or we have three or four valves and a 12 by 17 rectangular valve pit. So the first one we're going to talk about here is splicing wires with a grease fill wire nut. Now there's two different ways that we can connect our wires. And now if you look in a lot of books and the instructions on some of these products suggest that you just take two wires, strip the ends off, take the nut and place it over top of the wires and twist and that'll twist the wires together and form a connection. To be honest with you, I don't personally like that style of connecting wires and I've seen situations to where that doesn't result in a great connection. So what I do is I always twist my wires together before I put the wire nut on them. So I would take two wires like this, put them together, twist them really well and either use my pliers or some lineman's pliers or wire cutters or whatever I've got to finish twisting the wires together. I'm going to trim off the ends so that we don't have, you know, some ends out here that are compromising our connection. And then we're going to take our grease filled wire nut. And these come in a couple of different versions. Uh, King makes some grease filled wire nuts. Drycon is another version that you'll find. You'll probably find those in Lowe's or Home Depot or even the professional parts stores carry them. And all it is is basically a wire nut that has a little flap or a series of flaps here that hold some silicone grease inside of it so that when you put this over your connection here and you twist it down on there it's going to squeeze the grease around your wires and it's going to provide a good solid protected connection so that if your valve pit fills up with water it's going to be okay and it's not going to corrode these wires. Don't miss what I did there with clipping off the ends because if you twist your wires together and the exposed wires that are twisted up is longer than your wire nut well you're going to have exposed wires poking out the bottom and that's going to corrode and going to corrode up into your splice. So definitely trim off the edges of your wire so that you get the exposed wire shorter than your grease nut and then just twist it on and you're good to go. I always like to use a little bit of duct tape or electrical tape to tie my wires together and make sure that if something happens or somebody's tugging on a wire somewhere else that it doesn't compromise your slice. And this is always good to do out in the ground, especially if you're patching up some wires and there's some wires exposed. Sure enough, somebody will trip over one, somebody will tug on the wire. So always just tape your wires together and that'll provide for a better connection. The other method I want to cover is a direct burial splice. And what I mean by direct burial is that we're going to be repairing this wire and then covering it back up with dirt. It's not going to be in a valve pit or protected in any other way except it's just going to be out there in the ground. And basically this one starts off with just a regular wire nut not grease filled, just a regular wire nut that you would find for any electrical connection that we put on to our splice. And then what we have is a grease filled tube that we're going to stick this down into until it completely covers up. You're going to insert that all the way down to the bottom so that the grease fills up and provides a barrier here. And then we're going to lock this case back. It provides a couple of little channels for the wire and it has a locking clamp over top of it so then when you affix it 
that wire is not going to come out. Now this one's a little bit smaller and having a hard time locking, but I always like to tape my wires together, put it down into here, and if you need to tape this thing shut, then go ahead and do it. And what I've seen other people do is if this is going to be, you know, buried underground, um, and if there's more than one, I've seen people take a plastic bag or a potato chip bag or anything that you'd have on the truck and put it over top of these and then tape it down. Just a little bit of added protection, and I've seen a lot of weird stuff out in the field, but some of it's actually clever, and the more you can do to help protect these connections when they're out in the ground, the better. Because once these start to corrode, if this is just out buried in the ground somewhere out in your front yard or backyard or wherever, and it starts to corrode and become a high-resistance connection, that becomes hard to find out in the field.